So I want to talk about nitric oxide and heart health and why endothelial function matters, okay? So nitric oxide and heart health, why endothelial function matters. So you're going to learn about nitric oxide. You're going to learn about how it relates to the heart. But more importantly, you're going to learn a very, very important aspect of science that you won't really get anywhere else on these videos where people are just saying, oh, kale's good, or this is good, or that's bad, whatever it is. But you need to understand what is endothelial function and why it matters. So let's just sort of dive right into it so you understand that. Endothelial function, the research that I'm going to share with you is original research that I was involved with while well, it was at MIT, and it was done with our collaborators at Harvard Medical School, Brigham and Women's, and King's College London. So what I'm going to share with you is getting down to the why, okay? So you're going to uh, be able to share this with your family, friends. In fact, you can even educate your doctors, okay? So first of all, nitric oxide. What is nitric oxide? Nitric oxide is obviously a molecule, and it's a potent vasodilator. That means it opens up blood vessels, and it's key to maintaining blood pressure in your body. And it's an anti arthrogenic okay? Nitric oxide is generated, Very listen very carefully, it's generated when ENOS, endothelial nitric oxide synthase, we're going to go into this, which is a catalyst. So nitric oxide gets generated when this chemical catalyzes, which means enables the release of arginine, okay? So it's generated when ENOS catalyzes L-arginine, which is an amino acid. So in order for nitric oxide to get released, you have to have ENOS, which is a chemical your body should make. You got to have arginine, which comes from food. And that's when nitric oxide gets released. Another important element is when you exercise, blood shear stress, that means blood flowing over the endothelial cells in a shearing manner. So if here's your endothelial, this would be a normal force. This is a shear force. So this shearing force triggers NO production. So let's sort of jump into that and look at this, okay? So what you see here is, here's one of those capillaries that I showed you in the vasculature. So let's zoom in a little bit. So here's one of your capillaries. It could be your arteries, right, or your veins. And here is the inner part of it. Remember, we talked about it, the tunica intima. And when blood flows, so you're exercising, that's what these arrows represent. And this blood flow creates what's called a shear stress, right? So here's your endothelial and blood's flowing over it. And when blood flows over it, over the endothelial cells, it causes a production of nitric oxide. Well, from a system standpoint, we want to understand how all of this occurs. So how does this occur? So you notice right here, as the blood flows, the blood shear stress itself, the flow of blood, activates ENOS. What is ENOS? It's endothelial nitric oxide synthase. So when you run and when you exercise, this chemical gets activated. Very important. That's why exercise is important. So this chemical's activation helps convert the arginine that's in your blood. You eat, you know, a piece of meat or you you know, eat some other protein like moringa, which is a nice herb of uh, uh, comes from a tree, you get a lot of arginine in your blood. And that arginine, when you exercise, the shear stress releases enos, which helps convert the arginine to nitric oxide, okay? So you got to have, you're exercising, you have the arginine, and the arginine gets converted to produce nitric oxide. Okay, NO production, which leads to vasodilation and the maintenance of blood pressure. Okay, so you exercise, ENOS, endothelial nitric oxide synthase gets released, which converts the nitric oxide to the NO, and the NO does all this amazing benefits, which leads to vasodilation and the maintenance of blood pressure. Okay, uh, interesting side note, Big Pharma created Viagra. Guess what Viagra does? Viagra sort of short circuits this and helps your body release nitric oxide and you get vasodilation of certain organs, blood flow occurs into those organs, okay? Um, so this is why nitric oxide is important, okay? Very, very important. So let's go a little more deeper, okay? So again, we're seeing the shear stress, the activation of ENOS occurs, the arginine, is converted to nitric oxide and you get vasodilation, all right? So you can just look at that diagram, all right? 
Someone said, I bought a nitric oxide supplement. Not good. Bad feeling and swelling in my feet. Yeah, I would not because um, you got to be careful with these nitric oxide supplements, okay? Because the amount, it's all about dosaging because they could be short-circuiting some of these pathways. Exercise, which is what we're supposed to do as human beings or move, this is sort of the natural mode of how you release nitric oxide. You got it exercise, activity, and you got to have arginine, which comes from your diet. All right. Now, what happens? So our research using Cytosol and with our collaborators at Harvard, MIT, and Brigham, we were actually able to put all the pieces together to actually understand at the molecular systems level, what happens when you exercise, what happens when that blood flow goes over your endothelial. So here's the surface of your artery or your vein or your, or your capillary, and it has the endothelial. So that's one endothelial cell right there. When blood flows over it, that's your shear stress. And here's a little structure on your endothelial cell. This is one endothelial cell. Notice this structure. It looks like a Christmas tree. Everyone look at where I'm moving my cursor, okay? That's called the glycocalyx right here, okay? And the glycocalyx looks like a Christmas tree. When blood flows over, this structure shakes and it moves. And that, guess what, releases enos. That's this chemical. So the movement of blood moves the glycocalyx, and that is what releases enos, which is that very, very important chemical, which results. So notice here, blood flow over the endothelial moves glycocalyx structure on the membrane. The mechanical forces on the glycocalyx in, initiates, so the enos is used to convert the arginine through nitric oxide, okay? Very powerful, and there's a whole, all these chemical pathways. So the body is a very, very interesting machinery, okay? It, it, you exercise, you have the right food, and through these molecular machines, it converts, in this case, arginine mediated by enos to get you nitric oxide, all right? Now, how does all of that occur? Well, if you look at all the literature, like all those thousands of papers I talked about, you'll see all these little chemical pathways, little jigsaw puzzles of nitric oxide. Here's one pathway, here's another pathway, here's another pathway, here's another. Now imagine connecting all these dots. If you could do that, you would actually get a holistic understanding of nitric oxide release, okay? What's well, too complicated, so people weren't able to do it until Cytosol came along. With Cytosol, we're actually able to connect the dots, take all that knowledge that science has done without killing animals, mathematically compute those chemical reactions, put it all together as I shared in the video, and literally create a mathematical model of Cytosol. So again, for all of you who have supported our research, we wanna thank you, but this is where we're able to do this research on kale, why we're able to do it, okay? And doing that, we're able to then predict how much, without killing animals, this is over time, how much nitric oxide will get released through its precursor, the mRNA that creates ENOS, okay? So just remember, this is the curve Cytosol was predicting. Now, is this correct? Well, we actually did wet lab experiments at Harvard, and those orange lines are from Andrew Koo's work. So we're actually seeing the prediction of Cytosol and then we're actually able to see the validation. So our results, the black line matches the wet lab results. And same thing here. So this was published in one of the leading journals in the world showing that Cytosol can be used to mathematically model very complex functions. Until this, people didn't believe it, okay? So that's what we did here. And I was one of the senior authors on it with some amazing people, Andrew Koo, David Norslet, and others, uh, Guillermo Garcia, and Forbes Dewey over at Harvard and MIT, respectively. Now you got a deep understanding of the cardiovascular system at a vascular level and at the molecular level, okay?